as we are all grappling with the rise of authoritarianism globally, I think, or I, I fervently believe actually, that we really need to support women's rights. We need to support gender equality and we need to support grassroots feminist activists everywhere. And that this is, this is a, a, a terribly overlooked uh, but essential feature of authoritarian rule globally and, and that this is a, a really important key, I think, to fighting the rise of authoritarianism around the world. I'm Leita Hong Fincher, the author of Betraying Big Brother, The Feminist Awakening in China. The title of the book is Betraying Big Brother, and that phrase is actually taken from one of the feminist five activists who described just uh, what she was feeling when she was first detained. Um, and the first thing that the security agents did when they detained her and the other women as well, actually, was to confiscate their glasses. And Wei Tingting described the feeling of terror and complete power powerlessness that she felt. Um, and then she heard the sounds of singing voices of other feminist sisters around her, and, sh and she slowly recovered her sense of defiance and described that feeling as the joy of betraying Big Brother. And I just thought that that, was, that phrase was so evocative for many reasons. Of course, we all know Big Brother from George Orwell's 1984. Big Brother is the surveillance state always watching you. And, um, and it, I just I thought it was quite poetic and resonant and meaningful. I, I talk about this concept of China's patriarchal authoritarianism. Um, and a lot of people have pondered why it is that the Communist Party has survived for so long. Uh, it's now the, the longest lasting communist regime, even outlasting the Soviet Communist Party. Um, and there are different kinds of terms to describe the nature of the authoritarianism. But I think that the patriarchal nature of it, the subjugation of women, um, reducing women to the role of dutiful wife and mother, um, all of these things are really central to the Communist Party's control of the entire population. And there are so many different ways in which you see that. Um, and so uh, certainly I argue that this persecution of these young feminist activists can't be just lumped in with the Chinese government's overall assault on civil society. Um, I think that there's something uniquely challenging about feminism. Um, so first of all, it's the feminist activists themselves who are very highly organized. Um, and they've been able to mobilize a very broad base of support. But it's just the message of feminism itself. The message is that women should be free to control their bodies. They should be free to control their lives and make their own decisions about you know, whether or when to get married, whether they should have babies. Um, you know, the, the women talk a lot about sexual violence. They want to be free uh, to roam the streets, take the subway and buses without being sexually harassed. Um, all of the concerns that the feminists bring up uh, really resonate with, I think, millions and millions of women all across China. And so, um, there's something very subversive about the message of feminism itself. And of course, there's a very long history of feminism, even in, in China's own revolutions. Um, but the Communist Party has written out that history of feminism and, and also particular feminists who were famous in China's revolutionary history. Um, and so, so all of these uh, really highlight the patriarchal nature of how the government is able to stay in power. I'm an American citizen, but I'm also, I mean, I'm Chinese American and my mother is Chinese. And so um, I live in this democracy and in America we are dealing with a very dramatic erosion of our democratic institutions. And so in addition to describing how these young feminist activists are taking on the world's most powerful authoritarian regime. And, and they're, they're really challenging it in unprecedented ways. They're proving to be a, a unique threat, I think, 
Um, and, and I think there's a lot that we, uh, who are not Chinese nationals, can learn from the creativity, the determination, the commitment of these young women in China as we carry out our own battles against whatever a, a government uh, we're dealing with. Um, and so I, I hope that there are people who aren't necessarily following China that closely, but can be inspired by the stories of young women in China as well.